the 250s are next on the menu 12 laps 30 miles the full distance this is really close again always a very very closely fought class and the grid for the 250s incredibly close but on pole position it's alan carter the team silkaline honda man alongside him paul lewis the team mobile one coleman runner has been lifted onto his bike because he fell and bruised his heel in practice to such an extent that he can't walk properly but he says when he's on the bike everything's working well in the middle kevin mitchell nigel bosworth number 19 fourth fastest and on the yamaha from canuck in staffordshire martin jupp who was fourth in the championship last year so we really do expect a battle royal this is the table as it stands kevin mitchell you remember the restarted affair at snetterton it was a two-part race mitchell got the overall win from alan carter young paul brown a newcomer in third place well he fell heavily in practice and we're not actually sure whether he's going to start the race so brown may do nothing to add to the 15. Woolsey coulter is on fine form and going well paul lewis desperately needs the points that's why he started and adrian clark so there you have the top six the riders now are lining themselves up ready to go the sun's coming out here at donnington and the riders just about as relaxed as they can be. Martin Jupp from Canuck. There's Nigel Bosworth last year on an Aprilia. This year he's on the new VTZ 250 Yamaha, which is every bit as quick as the Aprilia and a lot cheaper to maintain. Kevin Mitchell on the Med Builders Yamaha. His sponsors from Yorkshire insisted that he rode here in Super Cup. He was wanting to go to Italy for the Grand Prix, but they said, no, Kevin, come on. We need some British exposure get down to Donington and do the business sincerely hoping he can there's Paul Lewis seven times Australian champion looking a little bit second-hand his heel is injured he fell quite heavily but he's a very gritty campaigner indeed and the fastest man round here in practice he's doing it yet again Alan Carter from Halifax won the French Grand Prix at the tender age of 17 he really is an amazing talent, but there's going to be a super race between those five and an awful lot of people lined up behind them as well. 250s then, 30 miles, the full distance. Steve, with this series the way it is now, the very best riders at home, the fact that Kevin Mitchell's sponsors have told him really that he has to do this rather than the Grand Prix, that can only be good news for British motorcycling, can't it? Super Cup series, there's no doubt about it. But Alan Carter's time of 139.6 seconds is nearly two seconds quicker than the second fastest man, Paul Lewis. So he really pulled one out of the bag for this qualifying session. Um, but I don't think we're going to see him storm away as he possibly expects. Well, let's talk about Lewis just for the moment. I mean, a bruised heel. Uh, that's got to really take the very best off his performance, surely. I know he fell heavily and he says once he's on the bike everything works well second fastest but that was before he tumbled yes that's right he was second fastest uh, paul lewis going off the line pretty late he probably doesn't want to be sitting sat back on the grid with his foot down for too long because it hurts too much but uh alan carter was storming paul lewis will be a little nervous the last thing he needs to do is to injure that ankle anymore uh so obviously he needs to keep the machine upright and not fall off of it but uh, this is the warm-up lap that they're now on. Once we spoke about earlier on, the riders are out there trying to get temperature into the tyres. You'll possibly see them weaving around down the straight because that allows the tyre to move around, which builds heat into it. Mate, these tyres are very, very soft compound, slick tyres. No tread on them whatsoever. Just harking back just very briefly, Steve, to that 125 tumble. Uh, if Robert Dunlop has, as we suspect, damaged his shoulder, that puts a big question mark over his appearance at the Isle of Man TT. Well, I think Robert was fully expecting to uh, himself and the team members to, to have a very, very good Isle of Man TT. He's become an extremely fast rider at that circuit. If he has damaged his shoulder or even, in fact, broken a collarbone, then it's, uh, it's going to be a real battle for him to get himself fit for the TT, which is uh, beginning in a couple of weeks' time. So, the revised result of the 125s, as I told you, and both those riders, with the possible exception of Robert Dunlop just knocking his shoulder, both riders fit and well in the fact they were so aggressive jumping back on. They actually went over the line in first and second places, respectively, but were disqualified by the officials for contravention of the rules. But both riders will be 
with us again at the Brands Hatch round, which is the next round of Super Cup. A sad day for Rob Orr because he would have been looking to increase his championship tally to some extent. But the grid now across the front row, fifth fastest Martin Jupp, then it's Nigel Bosworth, who's had a series of tumbles. If Bozzy stays on, he could be a force to be reckoned with. Kevin Mitchell, Paul Lewis and Alan Carter. And the speed Alan Carter went round here in practice, he's going to be a very difficult man to beat. The RS250 team Silkaline Honda is in fine form. 40 riders then. These 250s are quick and very evenly matched. A little over a second and a half separating the top 10 again, so it'll be an almighty sprint there. You can see Paul Lewis just weaving his way into position across the front row, 12 laps, 30 miles, the total distance of the two and a half mile Grand Prix circuit here at Donington. They're all creeping. Now that's a dodgy start because Alan Carter was creeping across. They'll restart the race. They went before the lights. The lights have now been switched back to red again. Steve, the nerves obviously very tricky at this point. Yes, and it's vitally important to get a good start, these machines. And they are all cleanly away now. Had that have been Speedway, those riders would have been disqualified, but they are given a second chance here in road racing. And a fantastic start there by number two, Alan Carter. So he's away. Alan Carter has a clear track in front of him. He has his tyres nice and warm, so he'll be trying to put some distance between him and the people behind him now. Well, for all we said about Paul Lewis and the damaged heel, Lewis slotted into second place. Number 27, Paul Lewis, is in a good second. But when Carter left the line, he went straight across to the middle of the track, lined himself up for Redgate, and once his nose was in front, well, there was no looking back, so to speak. But they're all threading their way through now up towards McLean's, Alan Carter, then it's Paul Lewis, it's Kevin Mitchell, then it's Nigel Bosworth. So no surprises so far. The top four very much as we would have thought. In fact, the top four just as they were across the grid. Where is Martin Jupp, number four? He was fifth fastest qualifier. We're looking for him now. But Paul Lewis is really going with Alan Carter. And these two now getting away and it's Lewis on the inside. The bike snaking all over the place. And I'm just wondering whether Alan Carter might be saying, well, you can go, chum, I'm going to sit back and watch it happen. Well, Paul Lewis went in there too quick, he made a mistake, he went in there too hot, ran wide, and was very, very slow through the S's, which enabled Alan Carter to just get on the gas and out accelerate him. So I don't think Alan Carter would have been too pleased with that manoeuvre. It was a pretty dodgy manoeuvre, up the inside, hard on the brakes, but uh, out of control. This is... Uh, we're going to see what happened now. Paul Lewis is pulled to the inside, but he's got so late on the brakes, he's charging into the corner. You can see he's trying to straight line the bike. Alan Carter's on the right part of the circuit to take a sweep at the corner. Paul Lewis is having to straight line it because he's on the brakes. He doesn't want to do what Rob Orme did, and he's gone wide. But now he's blocked the track. Alan Carter is unable to get past him on the apex of the right-hander, but uh, he won't be very keen. But now you'll see Alan get on the power and out-accelerate Paul Lewis. At the end of lap one, they're on their way now. Alan Carter, the team Honda man, is out in front. Kevin Mitchell has gone past Paul Lewis up into second place. So Kevin Mitchell, formerly from Burton-on-Trent, now living in Preston, Lancashire, on the Med Builders Yamaha, is in second. Kevin Mitchell, who fell so heavily in the Spanish Grand Prix just two weeks ago at Jerez. Last week, I beg your pardon, at Jerez, when in 13th place, was on his way to World Championship points, fell off the thing and wrecked it. So this is the number two bike he's on today, and it's going well. So the Yamaha of Mitchell, every bit as quick as the Honda of Alan Carter. And now Lewis is going with them. So one, two, three, looking for Martin Jupp. In 12th place is Martin Jupp. So not a good start from the Canuck man. Well, Steve, we thought the battle would be between these two, and they've said about it tooth and nail very early into the proceedings. Yeah, Kevin Mitchell closing slightly on the brakes. Paul Lewis, I think he's in pain. He's looking a little erratic. He's trying possibly harder than he is. He's maybe not as fit as he thinks he is. It's one thing uh, being lifted on your bike with a damaged ankle joint, but you need to be 100% fit to ride these machines at this sort of pace. 26-year-old Carter then leads. 
his burning ambition is to become British and then 250cc world champion. Well, if he rides like this, the British Championship will be a formality. Kevin Mitchell is right there with him. The numbers indicate where they finished in the championship last year. And Mitchell riding number eight did not contest all of the Super Cup rounds because he was away on World Grand Prix duty somewhat unsuccessfully on the Chas Mortimer Team Castrol Yamaha. But now, with a new mount under him this year, again, it's one of those V-twin TZs, the, the very next best thing to the factory YZR Yamahas. And as Steve Parrish has said earlier, there are no true factory Yamaha bikes now, so this is probably as quick as you can get. And uh, we had a tumble there, Ryder tumbled. I didn't get his number, but he looked to be rolling safely out of the way. At the front then, Carter leads Kevin Mitchell. So these two men now dragging away. Paul Lewis having an admirable ride in third place, bearing in mind the fact he's injured, and he's stretched away a considerable gap over the fourth place man. I think he'll actually be quite surprised that uh, Kevin Mitchell is so close to him. Wolsey Coulter, number three, had moved up to fourth place, and I'm just looking because one of the fallen riders might well have been Wolsey Coulter on the Queen's University Belfast Yamaha. I'll bring that to you, the confirmation of that, as soon as I can, but it looks suspiciously as though Coulter might have gone from the proceedings. But this is the race leader. Wolsey Coulter then has fallen. So there is Wolsey Coulter on his feet, but the bike's not very well. So Coulter was charging up from a lowly grid position up into fourth place, obviously overcooked it, but he's OK, he's on his feet, and back at the front, the pace is fierce. Yeah, Alan Carter, with his storming lap time, I think he thought he was probably going to be able to make a break, but Kevin Mitchell is stuck to the back wheel of this bike, and everywhere Alan Carter goes, Kevin Mitchell is there. My heart goes out to Wolsey Coulter because he was in fourth place in the championship after round one at Snetterton and is a very capable rider, would certainly have managed to tack himself on the back of this leading trio. And he was demonstrating that that was on the cards any minute when he slipped off the thing. Alan Carter either has a problem, Alan Carter has slowed. And he's dropped back. I'm not sure what the problem is, but he's dropped back now into third position. Well, there was some sort of signal there from Alan Carter indicating to Kevin Mitchell that he was out of contention. Paul Lewis has now shot through up into that second place. So Kevin Mitchell is in the lead well and truly from Paul Lewis, but Carter is not happy about something. A little bit puzzled as to what that was all about, and I think Kevin Mitchell is a little bit puzzled yeah, as to what it was all I about. I think there's a rider or a motorcycle on the track somewhere, and the riders are expecting the race to be stopped because they're all looking at each other and uh, to, to try and decide what's going on. But at the start and finish line here, there is a green flag, and the race is continuing. So, from Preston in Lancashire, Kevin Mitchell out in front. Paul Lewis had second place given to him because Alan Carter, for some reason, isn't comfortable now whether he's not comfortably mentally with what's going on or whether he has a problem with the bike but he's certainly got the bit between his teeth again now carter needs to get the honda back past paul lewis if he possibly can and he's gone through alan carter's nipped past paul lewis yeah, it's quite strange what's going on. Perhaps these two didn't want to lead the race. Maybe Alan Carter thought, well, off you go. And the other fallen rider there that tangled, that is in fact 46. That is Graham Mitchell. That is Kevin Mitchell's brother. There's Woolsey Coulter going across to tend to the injured rider. We'll give you an update on the situation of Graham Mitchell just as soon as we are able to. The race goes on, though, so we can assume from where we are at the moment that the situation is not a serious one otherwise I can assure you the race would have been stopped out in front though it's now Alan Carter head down right behind him Kevin Mitchell who may or may not be aware that his brother's now off the bike in third place it's Lewis so away they go up towards Goddard Alan Carter leads 86.94 
and the lap record round here and again maybe I'm not being fair but I'm comparing it with Grand Prix times the Grand Prix lap record is held by Luca Cadalora at the British Grand Prix of last year 92.47 so a good bit off the pace but then Steve these bikes in no way compare with the works Grand Prix machine now unfortunately they don't these are very standard machines we spoke earlier that there is no factory Yamahas around but there are some special parts that are given to some of the top GP riders and it does make a considerable difference to the performance of them but I think that Alan Carter and Kevin Mitchell they're playing with each other at the moment I don't think that either one of them is trying a hundred percent because I believe that they just want to put on a burst at the end and uh, nobody really wants to show the other one his hand Another for the lair, number 24, that's Tim Cousins. So Tim Cousins walking away, limping a bit, but walking away. They really are tumbling thick and fast here at Donington. It just underlines the strain and the pressure on these 250s. Steve, we can maybe take a look at, at Cousins' tumble. Yeah, well, he's come out of the corner. It's a high side situation, and it's exactly what I said, a high side, because the rear wheel slides out from behind him, flicks him around, but he is okay. That's uh, the great thing about runoff areas. He lands in the dust, the bike's broken, but he can walk away. The runoff areas and, of course, the protective clothing which they wear, Steve, very, very high-tech stuff, well covered under the leathers, so surprisingly tough. They could take some really hard knocks without any apparent problem. Mitchell dives for the front again, so Kevin Mitchell is back in the lead. These two then really vying for the honours here at Donington. And Paul Lewis, my hat goes off to him because he's been dragged along in the slipstream and really hasn't given up the pace at all. Lewis is really on the boil. Nigel Bosworth is still in fourth. And number five, Steve Sawford, has moved up into fifth place. Somewhat sensationally, and that we're nearly, well, we're over halfway through the proceedings now, but somewhat sensationally in seventh place, number 49, Paul Brown who fell off very heavily in practice and we thought he had a broken collarbone, wasn't even going to start. He's obviously got the better of that painful exercise. Yeah, there, there was a, a thought that he had broken a collarbone, but I believe it's now maybe just a, a dislocation or something like that. That's even bad, bad enough, but he's brave, glad he's out there riding and uh, picking up some points in seventh spot. It's a tremendous effort from Paul Brown. Well, third place after the first leg, he had to get out there if he possibly could because the points are very, very valuable. Martin Jupp has fought his way from 10th up to sixth he's now on the leaderboard behind steve sawford from tempsford in bedfordshire st neot's motorcycle sponsored sawford who is really only fit today it's taken a while for him to get over an accident he had some weeks ago and he's really now only fighting fit and said that he would really be going for it here at donnington well fifth place is no mean achievement he's behind the very best that uk 250 cc national racing has to offer and one of those is the walking wounded, Paul Lewis, still hanging on very tenaciously in third place. And I'm a little surprised that he's managed to stay the pace. Yes, I am also. It's amazing how, uh, how much grit and determination these riders have. Once out on the track, they can only think about gaining another position and finishing that race. Pain doesn't really come into it, which is unlike some other sports. A good day then for Carter, still right with him. Kevin Mitchell and Kevin Mitchell is going to have a real go he is now two-thirds distance Carter may have the fastest lap at 140.83 but he's charging and taking Kevin Mitchell with him so by no means has Kevin Mitchell given up the chase he's there in second head down elbows in snatching the throttle they're going down two gears up to McLean's now the long sprint up towards Coppice. This is the corner where John Kosinski threw the 250 Honda away in the British Grand Prix here last year. A lot of people have gone onto the grass at Coppice when it mattered most of all. In fact, Alan Carter fell off in the Super Cup round just a little bit further down the hill in the wet, exiting the old hairpin. Look at the way Mitchell threads that through there. And which one of them is the better on the brakes down here? Well, I'm not sure if they're going to... Oh, yes, and we just see that answer because Kevin Mitchell goes through, but I still don't think Alan Carter's trying that hard. He's shown what kind of lap times he can do. 
and I just think that we're going to see some real fireworks in these last couple of laps when we get round to that. I'm very glad, so I've just had confirmation that Graham Mitchell's condition is OK and he's sitting up and waiting for a lift back to the pit. So that's great news about the fallen rider number 46, Graham Mitchell. That is indeed tremendous news, and Kevin Mitchell won't know that, of course, but when he gets back to the pits, he will be told that A, his brother fell off, and B, his brother's OK. So that's good news. It might even be going out on the pit board for him and will inspire him to get past Alan Carter. And there, Graham Mitchell laughing and chuckling. It just illustrates how tough and gritty these people are. Woolsey Coulter with him. So those two, leathers off, ruefully surveying what might have been. They need the points but there are still four rounds to go. Now we're going to see a different story because they're in amongst the back markers. We might see Alan Carter going for it a bit earlier. He might decide that if there's a few back markers around, he can use those as blockages towards Kevin Mitchell and nip, nip through and uh, put some distance between him and Kevin. Well, the... Top six still the same. Martin Jutt grimly hanging on to sixth place, not being able to make any impression really on Steve Sawford. The gap is five seconds between fifth and sixth place, so Martin Jutt will really have to pull out something a little bit fantastic in the last few laps. But these two, it's just 0.3 of a second. In fact, maybe marginally shorter than that, but dynamite is the only word I can use to describe Kevin Mitchell going into there on the brakes, the Melbourne hairpin is where it could all be solved in the final analysis. Could it be, Steve, that Kevin Mitchell keeps trying it down there, knows he's maybe a bit superior on the brakes at the Melbourne hairpin, and might just save it there for the last lap? It could be, but I have a suspicious feeling Alan Carter's got his head down. Now, he's popped in the fastest lap of the race, or the quickest lap now on lap seven, so here he is. I think he's got his head down, and he's going for it. I think we're going to see the laps come down. So they're now on lap 10, with two laps remaining. Well, Kevin Mitchell is now seeing Alan Carter disappear ever so slightly away from him, so he's got to squeeze just a little bit more out of the Yamaha. So Honda lead, Team Silkeline Honda, in the hands of Alan Carter, 26 years of age from Halifax, who is lying second in the championship after the two-leg Snetterton affair. This will mean, if they stay as they are, they will be joint leaders in the championship, the honours even, a win and a second apiece. And it seems to map out for us that the 1991 250cc ACU Shell Super Cup title is going to be very much between these two because they appear to be head and shoulders over the rest. Yeah, very much so. But uh, Kevin Mitchell's not being dropped back at all. He's shadowing Alan Carter. So there is... My uh, prediction that Alan Carter is going for it now, if he is going for it, Kevin Mitchell is also doing the same, and he's shadowing him all the way through. Well, Carter was second in last year's championship, beaten, of course, by teammate Steve Hislop, who is away on European championship duty today. Uh, Hislop sees the European championship as where the opportunities are for him in 1991. He will be doing selected rounds of the British Super Cup series, but Alan Carter is contesting every one and has made it abundantly clear that he wishes to have the number one plate on his Honda for next year. Kevin Mitchell, though, using a wealth of Grand Prix experience, is sitting right up the exhaust pipe of Alan Carter, has him firmly focused and lined up, and Mitchell now is as close and he's attacking as hard as he's been for the last four laps, and that, well, Steve, tells the story. Yeah, Mitchell, there we see it. Mitchell's put in the fastest lap now, so it's toing and froing who's going the quickest. The pace is really hotting up now. The sun sneaking through the clouds here at Donington, making the tyres nice and sticky. The 250cc on the back end, and Carter's gone down. That started with a rear wheel twitch. Alan Carter will be livid with himself for that. That started with the rear wheel twitch. He corrected it, lost the front, and it was all over. Well, I was talking about tyres. I have a suspicious feeling the bike seized. Here we see it. You'll see the rear end lock up first, unless he's just applied too much rear brake. But I have a sus suspicious feeling there was a bike problem. You'll see the rear end slide now. He's maybe got the clutch and he's tried to correct it foot down, but then he's lost the front end. I think the motorcycle seized, and that's what's thrown Alan Carter off, because uh, that would never normally happen going into the corner on a two-stroke machine. 
What an upset for Alan Carter. His face tells the story. He cannot believe his misfortune. What do I have to do to win the race, he said. And look at this. Kevin Mitchell now, an untroubled win. This is going to be for him. A tail ender ahead of him, but he's got the world really at his feet now here at Donington. He's got to do nothing but just cruise around and keep the gap free because behind him on the last lap is Paul Lewis. And Paul Lewis is now some 7.9 seconds adrift. That moves Bosworth, Nigel Bosworth from Stoke Golding up to third place and he'll be pleased with that and won't want to do anything silly. Steve Sawford will get fourth. Martin Jupp goes up to fifth. And Paul Brown goes to sixth, and that's 10 points Paul Brown will pick up to add to the 15 he already has. So Paul Brown will move up the total standings. This man, though, is heading for the double. 20 from Snetterton, and it's going to be 20 from Donington. And I bet he can't believe his luck, because we will never know who was going to win this race. There was nothing in it. The two guys were riding very, very fast. They were on very well-matched machinery. And here it is, handed to him on a plate. He's ridden extremely well, but poor Alan Carter, what bad luck he's had. Our commiserations must go to Carter because uh, the race win, if not the second place, was bound to be his. And we really would have been set up for a superb round three at Brands Hatch. And we have a battle for second place, Lewis and Bosworth, it looks like. So it's not all over yet for the rostrum positions. Here's the race leader then, Kevin Mitchell from Preston, safe in the knowledge that nobody can harm him now. He's heading up the hill. This is the battle for second. It's Paul Lewis, Nigel Bosworth sweeping around the outside, and Bos has got it. Nigel Bosworth from Stoke Golding has squeezed the Yamaha into second place as a triumphant wheelie in the air from Kevin Mitchell over the line. The dash for second, Bosworth gets it from Paul Lewis, a very brave third for Paul Lewis an equally delighted Kevin Mitchell with the win, but Nigel Bosworth has to be well pleased with second place. But there's your winner, Kevin Mitchell. Hand in the air, the crowd liked that one. They too are a little bit rueful that poor old Alan Carter threw it away with two laps to go. And uh, if we find out that it was indeed a mechanical problem, we'll do our very best to let you know. But confirmation of the result, the top six then, Kevin Mitchell, Nigel Bosworth, a great second, Paul Lewis, a brave third, Steve Sawford, Martin Jupp, and Paul Brown, another tough youngster.